If you can't produce, you probably can't mix. There's a lot more to unpack than just that statement though. So let's dig into it. Hey everyone, I'm Cole Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. In this video, we're gonna be giving away a pair of studio monitors. Stay tuned till the end of the video to check that out and learn how to enter. Now, let's say that you wanted to become a mix engineer for a living. How do you do that? How do you go about getting people to hire you? Well, like most of us, you have to have some prior work to show for yourself. And then pretty much the only way to have prior work is to have produced and recorded a song yourself that you then can mix, that you then can show people what you're capable of. Now, I've been preaching on this channel for a long time that you should do whatever it takes to be able to have work to show for yourself. Maybe you got to record a band for free. Maybe you got to record your band. Maybe you've got to write the song so you can produce it and record it and mix it and master it. Maybe you got to do that 30 times in a row so you have enough work to show for yourself in order to get somebody to hire you. This is such a difficult chicken or the egg situation. It was for me my whole career. How do I get people to hire me without having something to show for myself? And it really comes down to just whatever it takes. So I produced my first band. It was my band. I produced it. I mixed it. I didn't even master it. Didn't even know what mastering was back then. <laughs> and so that got me to the place where then I could show other bands my work. And I had several other bands hire me. And, you know, this was a snowball effect that kept going on and on. But how long was it before I was actually being hired just to mix by other producers who were doing good work? It was a long time, honestly. It was a really long time, probably 10 or 12 years of constantly producing stuff, constantly uh, doing my own productions in terms of like my own bands that I was in, constantly getting other bands to hire me to produce, and then obviously mixing all of those projects. And eventually I had enough work and eventually I was a good enough producer that my mixes sounded good enough and I was a good enough mixer to uh, appropriately represent the productions where eventually people started liking what they heard enough to hire me, to take a chance on me just to mix. But this took a really long time. Now there's this saying that I heard a while back and I wish I could remember who said it and uh, I'm sorry I can't give you credit, but the saying was something like, produce like you're the artist, mix like you're the producer, and master like you're selling the record. And I think that this just encompasses my thoughts on it so well. Not only is it almost impossible to get someone to hire you to mix if you haven't mixed anything before, which means you have to produce something that you can then mix. But it also, I think, is really important because making creative decisions is a really big part of mixing. What we're supposed to be doing when we're mixing, we're supposed to be, in my opinion, let me, let me say that, we're supposed to be like shining the most marketable light on the music. And we're also equally supposed to be enhancing the emotion of the music. That's it. It doesn't really matter like how good your kick drum sounds or how good your vocal sounds or like, like the technical achievements in mixing are way secondary to being able to enhance the emotion of the song and shining the most marketable light on the song. That Those are our jobs. And I think the very easiest way to learn those skill sets is to produce, is to arrange the song, is to choose the instruments for the song, to write instrumentation for the song, to really sculpt songs over and over and over, hundreds and hundreds of times. And that really helps us learn how to put emotion into a song. It really helps us learn how to, how to sculpt a song that has more impact, that affects the listener more. And I think it's a really important skill to mixing. Now, of course, there are people who just came up mixing, whether they came up under mixers or they just got really lucky and got someone to give them a shot and continued mixing. But I think the vast majority of us started off producing. The vast majority of us started off recording. The vast majority of us started off just being an engineer, 
just learning how to place microphones, just learning how to dial a compressor, just learning how to record into Pro Tools or whatever else. Maybe, maybe you came up on tape. But I think that is a, such a fundamental skill to mixing. I think it's really important. So one, if you have not been hired just to mix before, and that's something that you want to do, you probably should start producing. You probably should produce nonstop until you record artists, record singer-songwriters, record rappers, like whatever you're into, whatever genres, but record people over and over and over and mix those projects that you've recorded. Now let's talk about mastering for a second. I think very much the same is true in mastering. The likelihood First of all, mastering is kind of a dark arts thing. You really have to have like your acoustic treatment under control and you really have to have your monitoring under control and you really have to understand the mindset shift for mastering because you have to approach mastering in a completely different mindset than you approach mixing. Mixing is like, uh, let's take a, a painting and let's take a Bob Ross painting with lots of little happy trees. Mixing is like, oh, uh, this tree needs to be bigger and this tree needs to be further and back and this stream is going to come from the back and we're, we're creating this image and this tree is brighter and the sun is coming from here and the sun is going to hit these trees in this direction. That's mixing. Mastering is taking the whole image as it's done and making the whole thing more blue or more purple or more red. It's a, a color grade on the entire image image. We're not focusing on individual elements. We're focusing on the big picture. And I think that un wrapping your head around that philosophy, that mindset shift is really important to be able to master your own music. I have a couple videos on mastering your own music. i probably need to do another one very soon. But uh, how do you get hired to master? Well, usually it's because you've mastered your own mixes. That's how I came up. So I get hired to master all the time from other producers and other mixers. I master lots of stuff that I didn't produce and I didn't mix. And how that happened is I produced enough stuff that I learned how to mix. And I produced and mixed enough stuff that people started hiring me just to mix. And I produced and I mixed enough stuff and mastered enough stuff that people liked what they heard and they but they wanted to mix it themselves. And so they eventually started hiring me to master. And it's just a lot of years, a lot of years uh, working through this. But I would have never been hired to master if I didn't mix. And I would have never been hired to mix if I didn't produce. And I probably would have been never hired to produce if I didn't write the songs to begin with. And so I just want to get that out there that I, I know a lot of people who are really trying to make a go at just mixing for a living. And I would encourage you, I would really encourage you if you're struggling with it or if that's just something that you aspire to be is just a mix engineer, start at the bottom, like learn the basics on how to record, learn the basics on how to arrange songs, learn how to get artists to perform emotionally figure out what that emotion even is. Like, how do you get a singer to sing something more happy or more aggressive or more sad? How, how do you even do that? I think these are really important skill sets to learning how to become a mix engineer. And I think it's very difficult to get hired without having those skill sets. So I just wanted to hop on here and say that because I've seen a handful of people that are kind of struggling just trying to mix. And uh, I hope that this helped you with your career. That's what I want all of these videos to do is to help you with your career. Uh, don't forget there's links down below to every piece of gear that I use. Anytime you guys need any piece of gear, you can jump on any one of my videos and click on any one of the links. And once you're on the site, you can purchase anything you need. Those links go to Sweetwater, costs you nothing extra, but when you use those links to purchase your gear, it helps me out a lot and helps me keep making videos like this. So thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. Okay, so we're giving away a pair of Oritone Active Studio Monitors. They are the red custom one-offs. This is not a color they normally offer. Uh, you do have to be in the lower 48 states. Uh, it is a USA only entry, unfortunately. 
and you need to not send anyone any money. You need to not reply to comments below saying that you have won. I There's uh, instructions on how to enter in the description below, but you just need to follow me on Instagram, follow Oratone on Instagram, and then email your Instagram handle to the email listed in the description below. And uh, that's it. I will notify the winner via a reply to your email. That's the only way that you're going to get notified is a reply to your email. Uh, so don't don't fall for any scams, please. Uh, but I absolutely love these Oratones. They've been in on every song that I've worked on forever. My Magic is in the mid-range mix tutorial that I'm sure every one of you have seen. It's my most popular video to date. It is based around how to mix on the Oratones and how I incorporate them into my stuff. So uh, yeah, pumped about that. I, I want you guys to win this. So please enter because I would love to get you a pair of these Oratones. I hope that this helped you guys. Uh, it's just a quick one. It's just a thought that I had and a, a principle that I wanted to share. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.